Alright, come on all summon the origin of the Easter egg hunt that kids all over the world get into at this time. Where did it originate? Uh, well, as usual, we have records of it going back to not that long ago, but plenty of evidence that it's a much, much older pagan animist origin. And that's what I'm speaking about here in this video. First of all, let's just get this out of the way. Easter, as we know, is a Christian tradition, but we Europeans had holidays at this exact same time of year long before Christianity ever even existed. In the Norse world, it would have been called Sieg, in Anglo-Saxon uh, England, they had a festival at this time to celebrate the spring goddess Eostre. We even have uh, folk tales and traditions of the May Queen um, that could be an early Easter parallel. The Slavs also celebrated something like this. Uh, we don't know what it was called, but we have the modern uh, Pesanki or the drowning of Marjana, uh, which we are sure dates to pagan times because of the connections to Slavic mythology. And the Celts too, it seems like they celebrated a festival right around the spring equinox at this time. We don't know the name of the festival or purpose, only that some cairns actually align up with the sun equinox here. In ancient Greece too, in Rome, we think the festivals of the Eleusinian uh, mysteries were held in the spring here, so all of these spring festivals from the most ancient times of our people in Europe. Well, of course, they were celebrated different ways, and even at different times too, and it makes sense. You know, spring comes to Greece a lot earlier than it comes to Scandinavia, for example. So, of course, the further north, the later it was celebrated, and of course, there are going to be small regional differences. A super long subject that we can speak about for five hours, but this is just to show my point that these spring celebrations go to much before Christianity even existed, and in fact, it was an English monk in the 600s who wrote that the Christian missionaries should try to get pagans to become Christian by letting them celebrate their native traditions and holidays, but change the names of them to Christian things and venerate saints instead of the pagan gods and goddesses. And we find similar texts like this over the next thousand years after that too. So. Christian traditions and holidays we actually have in Europe, most of them were pagan originals. This brings us to the Easter egg hunt. So the earliest record we have of this comes from the 1500s when the Protestant Martin Luther hosted an Easter egg hunt for his congregation. Before that, even in the 1200s, the English King Edward decorated and handed out a whole bunch of eggs to his people on Easter. After they had fasted, of course, for Lent, which was eating no eggs uh, for the 40 days leading up to Easter, those are the earliest written records we have of something involving the Easter egg hunt origins. But as you guys all know by now, the first written evidence of things does not reflect the true origin. Chances are this was already a tradition at this time these texts were written that were being practiced by more rural people at the time who were still following a lot of their pagan traditions even though the whole country was officially Christian. So what could the actual origin of the Easter egg hunt be and what was the purpose? Well, we know that this was an ancient festival devoted to fertility, and that is exactly what the Easter egg hunt is. It's meant to promote and bring fertility to the area, to the land of the people. This, again, is something called sympathetic magic, like I speak about in all my videos, how all ancient humans used to do traditions and rituals like this. Now, all sympathetic magic is, is doing an act or ritual that will influence the surrounding vicinity in a way to get the desired outcome. Voodoo dolls is an example of sympathetic magic that you all know. Another example would be tribes and their midwives be giving a mock birth with a stone outside of the tent in order to get the actual mother giving birth to have that go along a lot easier and smoother. Another example of sympathetic magic would be early farm cultures not letting their uh, hair or beards be cut for a certain time leading up to the harvest and the crops in hopes that the crops will all grow too as much as possible. Another example could be diet types of things like men eating things shaped like a cock to help with erectile problems or eating walnuts to help with brain function. Another would be women eating eggs to help well-functioning fertile eggs in the woman's body. All ancient cultures did things like this and it turns out a lot of the time they were right actually. 
So this Easter egg hunt is also a fertility ritual. The children run around looking for the eggs, and just like when you bang your woman, your sperm runs around searching for the eggs. The idea is, by doing this mock Easter egg hunt, like the kids are doing, that act influences the uh, conception between a man and a woman, promoting the sperm to find the egg. So this is a great time to bang if you and your partner are trying to get pregnant. If you live near a park, or if you're going to a party this Easter where kids are going to go on the hunt for the eggs it might be a good time to excuse yourself to the bedroom and plow your woman <laughs> at the exact same time that the kids are on the easter egg hunt but yeah the idea is the ancient sympathetic magic idea is that it should influence your sperm to also find the egg where does the Easter Bunny come into all this? Well, good question. We have written records of it, uh, as it was practiced by the Germans in the 1600s. But as always, there is a much older uh, pagan tradition. The hair has always been an older pagan symbol of fertility in the European religions. Why? Well, sympathetic magic again, guys. Rabbits breed faster and have larger and uh, more litters than most other animals in nature. So humans would look to rabbits and even keep some as pets and maybe even imitate the rabbits and just pay close attention to their breeding cycles so they could also benefit from this positive fertility energy all around the rabbits. This is sympathetic magic and honestly most of the old traditions, rituals, sacrifices, magic, and other cultural practices can all be explained by sympathetic magic. Most of them at least. Uh, as I say in uh, a lot of my videos. So, hope you enjoyed the video, enjoy your Easter, plow your woman, see how it works at least. We don't know if this is 100% proven, but all we can do is try, right? But that's all for today, we see you next time.